Greetings, brothers and sisters. Today, we're looking at Mark chapter six, and I entitled this particular study, They Did Not Understand Jesus. Jesus left them there and went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked? What's this wisdom that has been given him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas and Simeon? Simon, aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offence at him. Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honour except in his own town, among his relatives and in his own home. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few people who were ill and healed them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village. Calling the twelve to him, he began to send them out two by two and he gave them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except the staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals but not an extra shirt. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed with oil many people who were ill and healed them. King Herod heard about this, for Jesus' name had become well known. Some were saying John the Baptist has been raised from the dead, and that's why miraculous powers are at work in him. Others said he is Elijah, and still others claimed he is a prophet like one of the prophets of long ago. But when Herod heard this, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised from the dead. For Herod himself had given orders to have John arrested, and he had bound him and put him and put and had him bound and put in prison. He did this because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, whom he had married. For John had been saying to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. So Herodias nursed a grudge against John and wanted to kill him, but she was not able to. Because Herod feared John and protected him, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man, when Herod heard John, he was greatly puzzled, yet he liked to listen to him. Finally, the opportune time came. On his birthday, Herod gave a banquet for his high officials and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. When the daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his dinner guests. The king said to the girl, ask me for anything you want and I'll give it to you. And he promised her with an oath, whatever you ask, I will give you up to half my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what shall I ask for? The head of John the Baptist, she answered. At once the girl hurried in to the king with the request, I want you to give me right now the head of John the Baptist on a dish. The king was greatly distressed, but because of his oaths and his dinner guests, he did not want to refuse her, so immediately he sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. The man went, beheaded John in the prison, and brought him, brought back his head on a dish. He presented it to the girl, and she gave it to her mother. On hearing of this, John's disciples came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all the all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. 
By this time, it was late in the day, so his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said, and it's already very late. Send the people away so that they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered, you give them something to eat. They said to him, that would take more than a half than half a year's wages. Are we to go and spend that much on bread and give it to them to eat? How many loaves do you have? He asked. Go and see. When they found out, they said five and two fish. When Jesus told them to make all the people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces of bread and fish. The number of the men who had eaten was 5,000. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. After leaving them, he went up on a mountainside to pray. Later that night, the boat was in the middle of the lake and he was alone on land. He saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. Shortly before dawn, he went out to them walking on the lake he was about to pass by them, but when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost. They cried out because they all saw him and were terrified. Immediately he spoke to them and said, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat with them and the wind died down. They were completely amazed, for they had not understood about the loaves. Their hearts were hardened. When they had crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret and anchored there. As soon as they got out of the boat, people recognized Jesus. They ran throughout that whole region and carried those who were ill on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages, towns or countryside, they placed those who were ill in the marketplaces. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak and all who touched it were healed. Well, I entitled the talk, They Did Not Understand the Loaves, which is another way of saying that they did not understand who Jesus was, who Jesus is. Well, we come across a number of incidents in this particular chapel, chapter, all of which show that the disciples really didn't understand, the people really didn't understand who Jesus was. First of all, we see that the people of his own hometown did not understand Jesus. They just couldn't get over the fact that Jesus was one of them, that they had known him his whole life. They knew his mum, his sisters, his brothers. They would have known his father. They knew that Jesus did the work of a carpenter in that village. They were filled with envy and they didn't recognize him as the savior. They just recognized him as an ordinary man. Because of that fact, Jesus could do no miracles there. They really didn't understand who, really didn't understand him at all. Secondly, in verse seven to 13, the villagers that Jesus, that rejected Jesus' disciples didn't understand Jesus either. The ones that did recognize Jesus and therefore his disciples were blessed, but those that didn't recognize the disciples that uh, told them to leave town, uh, they were not blessed. Thirdly, in verses 14 to 29, we discover that Herod didn't understand Jesus either. Herod felt, must have felt an immense amount of guilt in regards to John the Baptist and the terrible thing he did to John the Baptist by beheading him. He had John the Baptist murdered. What a brutal age that must have been, that uh, a young girl would ask for the head of John the Baptist and uh, that Herodias, Herod's uh, wife, uh, encouraged her to, to ask for his head. Well, 
a whole lot of alternatives were given to Herod, but he said, no, this is the reincarnation of John the Baptist. He didn't understand Jesus at all. He lived in his guilt and his fear, and uh, he suffered, no doubt, eternally for that. In verses 30 to 49, we discover the disciples didn't understand fully who Jesus was either. You read these remarkable words there. They were completely amazed. This is about Jesus walking on the water. For they had not understood about the loaves. Their hearts were hardened. It's strange how the two stories are linked. Jesus feeds the 5,000 men, which doesn't include women and children. So it would have been even a greater miracle than uh, what we read about here in Mark's gospel. But they really didn't understand Jesus. Jesus had fed them. He had turned two fish and five loaves into enough to feed 5,000 men, not including the rest. Amazing miracle. But then when the disciples went on ahead of Jesus, Jesus walked on the water towards them. They were absolutely terrified. And Jesus said, it is I. And then we read those words, for they did not understand about the loaves. Their hearts were hardened. They didn't understand who Jesus was, that he was the son of God, the Amazingly, the spirits, the unclean spirits, recognized who Jesus was. But the disciples yet did not realize he was the Messiah, the Son of God, God incarnate. They just didn't understand fully at this point. That would only come to them really after the resurrection of Jesus. But it makes one think, doesn't it, that if you don't recognize who Jesus is, you just miss out on hope, blessing. You're filled with anxiety and fear. You don't see Jesus as, a, as God who has power to change our lives and make it better to remove the guilt that Herod had, uh, to provide for us when times are difficult. If we don't recognize Jesus for who he is, we end up just being terrified, living in fear. But if we know who Jesus is, that he is the son of God and that he has all authority on, in heaven and on earth, then we can live with peace, that we can live in the knowledge that everything is secure in his hands and that our lives are also secure in the hands of Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, it's easy to live with anxiety. It's easy to live with fear. Many people do. And Lord, we, we know that to not have fear, not live with anxiety, not to be terrified, that we need to have all our confidence and hope in you. To acknowledge that you are who you say you are, that you are the Son of God, the Messiah, the one who has come to bring peace again to this earth, to bring us into a right relationship with your Father. And we thank you that through the cross, through our faith, in you and what you achieve for us on the cross that we are right with your father that our lives are secure in your hands and we pray lord that we would know that for ourselves be with us this day we pray in jesus name amen